we, we are here with Sven. We're gonna try to do a little Svenness with Sven. So basically I've taken some clips, some of um, from the Svenness videos, and I'm hoping that you can sort of give us some insight into to what your mindset is or, or what yeah. you're doing to prepare for these things that you seem to be doing and nobody else does. Yeah. The first one we have is a, is a wide turn. And everybody else, and we've all been taught this, tape to tape and you cut off the yeah. apex. You seem to always take this wide line yeah. from here and you go all the way along that line and come out of it. Yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the thinking there? Well, the line that everybody use is uh, slippery. And I try to find a, a line that is not slippery that I can use when I do it on a really high tempo. I can make a move and, and uh, have a, a gap with my um, competitors. So uh, I test some lines and uh, where the grass is green, normally that is not so slippery and I try to, uh, to find the right uh, turn. So that's the reason. Okay, and it, it looks like a lot of times you'll do that throughout the race yeah. and then in the last couple laps, then you'll change and you'll use the some, same line. That, yeah, that sometimes I try to, um, uh, to, to use a line that everybody knows, okay, in the last lap I can beat him. And then I use the line they're using, and then they are surprised and they're getting nervous, and uh, it can help to, uh, to be mentally the strongest. Change the position on the bike, change the lines you are choosing, helps to be mentally the strongest. This one, one, it's just the line through the mud that you're, it looks like you're testing out the line. But more, more here's something that I've noticed. The hand position. Yeah. One on the tops, one on the hoods. Yeah. What's the, what's the, is that something you're doing consciously and, and why? What's, what's the That's the only that? thing, there is no reason. Okay. I do it um, and I don't know if I, that I'm doing it. Um, I use my right hand to shift. Sure. Um, so normally when I don't need to shift, I put my two hands on the handlebar above. Yep. Um, the only reason I can think is that I, I need to shift and that's the reason why I use my right hand on the shifter. Great. But sometimes I see it and I say, well, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I don't know if you remember this race. Yeah, I know. That. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to come up. Now, again, two lines, two conventional lines that people are taking. They're either going inside yeah. or they're going outside. Is this something that you're preparing for before the race or is yeah. this just as you ride, you're seeing that that's well, obviously something well, no one else is doing that you can gain an well, advantage? This is a course where the race, every lap changes because of the weather. So you need to, you need to stay alert and, and uh, watch which lines are the best. Sometimes it changes in the race. Um, I'd like to turn white in the beginning and go to the to the to the how you say it to the um, uh, through the corner um, completely to the left. Right, right. That's, that's sort of like to the, the angle of that turn. I, I choose you're cutting a special it off. angle. Sure. Uh, but it's most of the times because of the grip. Okay. I need to have a lot of grip, otherwise you need to run over here. Right. So you see a few guys who can handle it and they need to run uh, in the middle of the climb. So the angle I use is necessary to have good grip, uh, but it changes sometimes definitely in a course like that. But in a course like today in Vegas, yeah. uh, train and do three laps before, I need to, uh, to have some good vision of the track and know which line I'm going to choose. Right. And the pressure, definitely the pressure of the tires. And in this race again, when it came down to the end, you are going inside the whole time. Yeah, shortest way. And uh, to win, you need, the shortest, you need to have the shortest way, if it's possible, that you have the grip on the back of your wheel. Otherwise, you need to run. There's not a good one. Yeah, so sometimes it happens. That's my question. So this is a race you end up winning. Yeah. After this happens, everybody else is going, they get a gap on you. It's something that I think a lot of amateur races, a lot of younger races struggle with. Yeah. What's your mindset here? How do you recover from that and get yourself back into the race? Well, it's definitely, you need to be fit. You, have, you need to have physically a good feeling in the race. So when a crash happens during a physically good race, it's not a problem. Then you are mentally strong enough to come back. This is a race where 
all the guys can crash because it's a hard race there's a lot of mud so you need to have positive thinking in your mind and to say to, to yourself everybody can crash they go over the limit and then they're gonna make mistakes so okay this is happens forget about it and try to focus on the best lines and if you're good enough you can win the race so always be positive that's what you need to do definitely in a race with a lot of mud and everybody can uh, can have a crash all right here's something that I, when I saw it live I was like this is amazing I almost don't want to ask you the question because I want to think that this was on purpose yeah. it looks like you're taking the pit into him into the pit yeah okay, so you this is and then you fake them out of course and you come back so that's yeah. all right so just talk me through it I knew he's gonna take a bike but I knew the fastest way was not through the pit so if you're doing that I even not need to turn around because I hear that he is going in the pit and they're getting nervous and they yell because that's a, that's a dangerous part, uh, uh, point to lose some seconds and when you can use then your power it costs a lot of energy to come back um, and need to close the gap I can recover a bit and that's cyclocross because when I'm recovered I can do it again so you're almost making the decision on what you're hearing behind you if you're yeah. going to pit or not yeah. and when you heard and you knew he was yeah. going to pit you made the turn out because that's that was the winning move right there that's the winning move because I, you, came, you had a good five second lead after yeah. the pit it's true i've done it also in louisville at the world championship in the last uh, lap i tried it also but he was not going in the pit so maybe he know it from uh, from the races before but it's not only racing, it's not only using your power, you need to be mentally the strongest and to do some small things, they're getting nervous. Alright, easy one here, just just for everybody that struggles with riding this sand, just give us some tips about getting, well, getting through. Well, um, riding through the sand is put a lot of pressure on your back wheel. So, sit on the saddle is the best, but when you're using your power you're a little bit above the saddle uh, but staying on the back wheel and tires with less pressure less pressure as less as is possible because you need to turn uh, after the, the sand you need to you need to have a good feeling also in the corners and, and but low pressure staying on the back wheel and the big gear because when you're riding with a small gear you're digging in the sand you need to have power definitely but a big gear and choose the good line but don't um, panicking when you are out of the good line choose another one and um, going in with a lot of speed that's a few tips you can uh, you can have but it's not all always possible to ride through the pit to, through the through the, the sand pit because of the sand is completely different in completely different circumstances when there is a lot of water in sand you have good lines when it's really dry it's really difficult to uh, find a line there are no lines uh, every lap it's gone because it's really dry so uh, I'd like to uh, to ride through the pit when it's a little bit uh, rainy uh, then you have good lines Excellent. all right so the last one that we have here is the um, Belgian national championship and it's again through the sand yeah. and did you know because it looked like you passed to set up the move you wanted to be first through the pit yeah did you know what happened behind you could you hear it could you hear the yeah. crowd there was maybe 20,000 people um, I knew before the race that that was the difficulty in the race where I can win the national championship so on a certain moment you watch and you see the best riders are not in my in my wheel they are three four five places behind so when the guy who is on the limit going in the middle of the sand of the bike the other guys need to follow so I hear the people right now it gives me energy and it gives me a, a gap of 15 seconds because of not only I was riding really good through the sand but the right guy was behind me and the other guys the stronger guys has the problems because he was jumping on the bike so it's not only be strong and have the good lines but watch who is in your bike
awesome. The new bike, you've had some time on it now. Yeah. The Trek Boone. Yeah. After six, seven months on it, what's your what's your reaction towards the bike? I can say it in one uh, one word, not not maybe one word, but it's as fun as by his own. It's it's a really special bike that gives me yeah a lot of power. It's really light. Um, it brings me on a perfect way through the corners. Um, yeah, I, 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 I find another dimension in, in my bike and, and uh, it helps me to motivate me, to motivate me and to, uh, to work with them together for the future and I'm really happy with, uh, with Trek and uh, with the bike I'm riding right now. Uh, it was from, from day one I felt that I had uh, another, uh, another uh, dimension. Outstanding. Well, thank you very much for taking the time no problem. to talk with us. Again, this has been Bill, CXHairs.com. We're talking to Sven about Svenness.